Hello, Paisanos. What's going on? It's episode three of uh, motherfucking Ricksty Minutes with uh, Best Guy Ever and Digibro. I don't give a fuck, bitch. <laughs> yeah, that's my guy. <laughs> And uh, all right, everybody, it's the it's the, this episode that's gotten a lot of publicity, a lot of dank memes coming out of the woodwork for this one. Uh, Pickle Rick, Pickle, Pickle Rick, everybody, fucking Rick. What yep. were they thinking? Genius, Madman. genius is what they were thinking. <laughs> How high do you even <laughs> have to be to come up with Pickle Rick? It's absolutely absurd. Uh, so let's talk about the premise uh, about Pickle Rick. All right, they literally just came up with, like, let's make Rick a pickle, and then they made yeah. an episode about it. And <laughs> it's it's great, because these people are good writers, and they don't fuck up, and yeah. everything is perfect. <laughs> it's I, I, th- I think with this episode, what they were going for is, uh, because I feel like this show has gotten really into the habit of trying to fuck with the viewers' expectations, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think they, they, they seem to have a firm grasp on, like, what people think Rick and Morty is. And, yeah. like, how they can fuck with you in that. So with Pickle Rick, <laughs> like, they wanted you to be deeply concerned about this. Like, no that doubt. this seems like a stupid meme. That this seems completely retarded. Why is Rick a fucking pickle? Like, the way that Morty reacts to him at the start of the episode is just like, what? You know, like, yeah. why would you do this? This is a stupid mm-hmm. idea. Like, everyone can, like, because I can tell... I can I can just see Justin Roiland walking into the room and going, Pickle Rick! We're going to make him a pickle! Rick's going to be a pickle! And everyone's like, no. No, that's stupid. And he's like, ah! <laughs> pickle Rick! And then they had to do it. You know? I'm, I have no doubt that's what went down. <laughs> I uh, have no doubt either. <laughs> it, yeah, but... Uh, it's just great. And like, I, yeah, I feel like that's, that's exactly what they're going for. Everyone in the episode is reacting to this with yeah. exactly like the dry, you know, exasperation that you would ex- expect <laughs> yeah. in a situation like this. And then it's a fucking great episode anyway. So, and uh, I, I it's think making the exact the, point. You know, we can even mm-hmm. read in like Rick himself says he like, he says this ironically because he doesn't actually mean it. But um, he says, I did this to challenge myself to see if I could turn myself back. And I feel like the writers did this to challenge themselves of like, okay, let's take one of the stupidest ideas that Royland's ever shouted at the top of his lungs while walking into yeah. the room and see if we can actually make that a cool episode. And they did. They succeeded. It's you know, great. that's interesting that you frame it as a challenge, because I think of it more as just, like, an expression of just, like, how superior the people making this show are compared to the rest of the landscape. Because, like, you can have, so you can have like, a good premise. You know, you, yeah. can, you can go on and you can have yourself a good premise. But if your writers are shit, if, like, the team doesn't have its act together, it, it can easily be garbage. There's so many things you can fuck up. These people, they simply know what the fuck to do to make a good show. And there's almost no premise that they can fuck up uh, if they put the effort in, which yeah. they clearly did here. And it was great. It's a great episode. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you can watch the train of thought unfolding as this goes on of like, okay, Mm -hmm. Rick's a pickle and there's literally no one's around to do anything about it. What is Mm -hmm. like the natural course of events that's going to happen? Like something has to get him off the desk. A cat will come in, you know, something's going to have to get him off the porch. A rain's going to come in. Well, if it rains, he's going to fall down the drain. Well, if he goes well, down you know, the drain, what's going to be down there? Cockroaches. Mm-hmm. What can we do with those? And then from there, it's just like building up this. It's like spore almost, you know, like, it is just like spore. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what I what I loved about this episode was and Rick and uh, this is like the, the general thesis I was thinking about for this episode. What, what it made me think about Rick and Morty, Rick and Morty, like better than almost. I don't know. I'm not going to say better than any other show. But, like, it's so great at being logically consistent with, like, the just what it's having its characters do and, like, the, the, the things they have at their disposal and, like, the laws going on. So, okay, when I first heard about Pickle Rick, I thought they would do something like have him, like, hop around, be like a pickle man who could just, like, you know, I don't know, roll and do things like that. But a pickle doesn't have fucking muscles. It can't move. Yeah. So, like... Right from the start, they establish Rick cannot move anything except his face and tongue. That's yeah. the entirety of what, like, like the tools in his toolbox to deal with the situations that he finds himself into. And, like, I was expecting them to fuck that up. And, like, I'd see him, like, inching like a worm yeah. or, like, wiggling around was, or something. But they never do that. It was they even never fucking fuck with up. my brain at first to, like, when he was laying there. And I was like, can't he just roll? And I'm like, well, I guess he wouldn't. Like, why would he That's the be expectation, able to do that, right? Know? That's exactly it. You, we've watched so many of these fucking cartoons that would 
would make us think that like a pickle can yeah of course it can roll it's a pickle why it's gonna roll but like no he's got no fucking muscles in his body with which you contort his mass to make him roll so like yeah it just it's exactly how it should be it's exactly how it should be and then uh you know and then just because rick is such a fucking genius he can cox these amazing situations to give himself fucking limbs and yeah. like powers and weaponry and all the shit he needs to get through oh it's the best and like that moment where uh where he like plugs like the brain plug into his fucking you know yeah. uh pickle brain that was like visceral and i was like yeah that's just what you have to do god yeah. i love how rick is not afraid at all to get his hands hands dirty and like oh, no. like so many people this like, episode's imagine fucking if you got, disgusting man it, i know it's a nightmare <laughs> it's a fucking nightmare <laughs> it was it was hard to watch for me when he was in the with the cockroaches and everything like yeah. <laughs> licking the thing's fucking brain i was just like ah why <laughs> why do i have to look at this you know, just to be just just to be have the appearance of of fairness. The the one thing that I thought was a little bit ridiculous is how he puppeted the cockroach with his tongue by touching its brain. That's that's the one thing that's like, all right. I mean, is there any way awesome. that would It was awesome. <laughs> like it was done with great effect. So I I was I got over that quickly and it was not a big deal. I mean, the uh, fact that he like <laughs> the moment he like because I I didn't know what he like I thought he was gonna have it somehow I don't know mm-hmm. carry him transport no he bites his fucking head open and I was just yeah. like oh my god fucking what are brutal. you doing <laughs> I just love what like a fucking badass Rick is he's not like Doc Brown who was like this clumsy you know the character he's based on like clumsy yeah. weirdo science man who. It doesn't really get his hands dirty just because of the nature of the show. But Rick is a fucking murdering monster. Yeah. He'll just go. He'll genocide a country if that's what it takes I think to we've, do whatever. I think I can say officially that mm-hmm. they are trying to make Rick and Morty the most violent show of all time now. Like <laughs> You think so? Like, uh, I mean, the show has always had some violence. But, like, mm. you, you look back at season one, like... Episode one, they they kill a bunch of bug men. There's some green blood here and there. Like, mm-hmm. uh, there's a little, you know, there's like there's a little violence here and there. There's moments of of some of some violence uh, when mm-hmm. Rick blows up the king. Of, but most of them are like green or blue blood. You know, it's not a lot of yeah. like yeah. humans getting eviscerated horribly. And season two kicked it up with the Purge Planet. That was where it was really like. Uh, I mean, season two is pretty fucking violent overall, but Purge yeah. Planet was like yeah. another level. But this season, every episode has just been a fucking bloodbath, like insane amounts of violence going on in this uh, show now. Y- you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. I I think I suspect that there. It just I I think that it just kind of happens to be that way. Maybe there is an intention. Maybe they they are going in that direction uh like yeah. but it, it seems to me like it, they're per- they perfectly make sense for the premise of each of the episodes right. so maybe they do just have an inclination to write more violent stories but like I mean, they I were think, just doing a yeah go on i think adult swim has kind of had like a long-standing desire to have the most violent show on television they like would. if you think back like they had that Korgoth the Barbarian pilot, which was mm-hmm, just nonstop mm-hmm. violence. Metalocalypse was really fucking violent, in spite yep, of not yep. even being an action show. Managed to have like <laughs> insane violence in every episode, you know. Yep, and it uh, ruled. Most of their shows have had like insanely violent episodes where they'll just be like blood literally everywhere. I think There's of like one... a. Aquatine you know, Mr. Hunger Force when um the fucking yes. spider yes. like t- <laughs> just collecting everyone's blood. That that was the episode that made me stop watching Aquatine. I never was real. I was never a big Aquatine guy at all. But that's uh-huh. when I'm like, this show is definitely not for me. That's I the just, only I, sh- episode I loved of Aquatine really? Hunger Force because there was so much <laughs> blood. It was awesome. I just never laughed, and then I got grossed out. So I'm like, why the fuck am I even watching yeah. this? There was no reason. Um, uh, yeah. Well. I mean, we haven't even touched on, like, the other half of this episode that is yeah. also legitimately great and makes – I think this is for the first time – makes uh, Dotaru, whose name I forget, I think this is the most I've ever liked her as a character. They're really yeah. finally digging down, and we're exploring her character more, and just, uh, it's just, good shit. It's just good for shit. The, the one line where she's – like, my f- one of my favorite jokes in the episode um, mm-hmm. from that scene anyway. Like, everything involving Rick was hilarious and awesome. Like, I was yeah. laughing constantly at everything that went on with Pickle Rick. Um, the other scene is much more serious. It's like this actual deep seated psychological thing going on where like they, they literally just go to a counselor and they spend the whole episode just like having 
um, uh, a family meltdown, essentially, or, or yep. mainly yep. Beth, who won't open up and be honest with her feelings. And they're just getting royally fucking owned by this uh, this counselor, <laughs> which I knew was yeah. going to happen. Like, the whole episode, I was like, they're going to get fucking owned by this bitch. <laughs> and it, it happens. Which is appropriate, because, like, yeah. we understand all their nuances. We know yeah. what's going on, so they can't, like, hide that shit. Or, right. You know, it's, it's good. And uh, so... Th- they, that's all going on, but my favorite line, my favorite joke line from that is when Su- um, Summer, who the whole episode we have known that she apparently huffed uh, pottery. <laughs> Glaze or something? Yeah. Th- that's part of why. They're, they're here because Morty pissed his pants at school and she huffed pottery, and it was has been assumed that this is because of their family situation. And yeah. the funniest part <laughs> is that... The, it, there's this reveal that it really wasn't about that at all. These were just <laughs> Summer just wanted to get high, and, yeah. and Morty is just <laughs> a fucking idiot. So uh, <laughs> that reveal was probably my favorite joke in the episode. Which Summer's like, I'd like to be thought of as someone who just likes to get high. <laughs> yeah, Summer fucking killed it with that line. That was great. That Her was fucking great. voice acting was amazing this episode. The line when um when the teacher comes out of the room and she's like none of us have ever eaten poop. Like, however she says it was just, like, yeah. spot on. I fucking loved it. That was great. Uh, I will say, though, I think the poop jokes just kind of fell flat for me. I, I got it the first time, and then they just kept doing yeah, it. it. That was fine. I just didn't care. Yeah. Not as funny as the times, as, like, the number of times they used it. But yeah. whatever. It wasn't a big deal. Well, uh, I mean, let's... Okay, well, let's talk about... So, so the reason why Rick is a pickle, of course, is because he's trying to get out of this counseling thing. That, yeah. That's what's revealed. And so there's this plot set up. Of, I mean, I assume everyone who's watching this has seen the episode. But nonetheless, like, there's this... He's got this thing set up where he's going to... Um, like, as soon as they leave, there's, like, a timer, and it's going to inject him with human serum or whatever. He's going to turn back to a human. Yeah. So that's, like, the undercurrent going on through the episode that, that's... Uh, and, like, the Beth, like, takes it away from him because it's immediately obvious what he's trying to do. And then, you know, her and the therapist and the kids are, like, exploring how they know that obviously is what this is. And yet Beth just can't bring herself to fucking question her father in the slightest. And uh, I forget how that resolves. Did she actually, did she challenge him at all at the end? I think she did a little bit, but then immediately gave it back to him. Uh, yeah. I, I honestly don't remember she, how she that She kind resolved. of just, like... The ending of the episode, they're both clearly shook by what they've uh, experienced at the mm-hmm. at the psychological place. She she she. The only thing she says is like, "You shouldn't have lied to me." Like he, right, he's, he right. she almost doesn't. Like he says, "I'm sorry, I lied," and she's like, "Oh, it's okay. Well, you shouldn't have lied, but it's okay." You know, mm-hmm. like she barely barely concedes it's really him course, who does the the apologizing she even she can't get past it even when he can admit that's true fault. and uh it's it's great that like even throughout the whole the whole at the end like she is resistant the entire time beth is the one who's who's fighting the therapist like the entire fucking session the right. kids at, at the end after like the therapist does her monologue it just lays out exactly what beth's problems are in no uncertain terms that you know we basically already know uh uh like the kids are just like I, I liked her. Yeah. <laughs> can oh, can that, we go back? That, that was the, great. Their faces at the end of the episode was like, ah, oh, that hit me, man. Yeah, like just that the way brutal. that the way that the other two were trying to be so casual and like the kids know they know that these two are shaken by this and they're like yeah. trying to break through the facade, like, hey, um, uh can we can we be honest can we go back i i kind of liked it it was it was kind of enriching and you know that's like that's almost like a little bit too real right there because like every day people out there we we all do it we all lie to ourselves uh about the way that we kind of wish that we were we trick ourselves i'll give you a real example right now uh i tell people that i go to the gym three times a week i (laughs) often miss fridays because I just, like, get caught up doing stuff. But I still tell people that I go three times a week. That's yeah. me kind of lying to make myself feel better about it, even though I'm, I'm not, like, meeting the obligation I've set for myself. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a small little thing. But, like, the, the, <laughs> these people are lying about, like, like Beth's whole life has been, like, destroyed. And her, her kids, like, their lives are put in danger every moment that Rick is around, more or less, uh, yeah. because he just doesn't he doesn't give a fuck and is, like, the ultimate danger to the fucking universe, uh, and especially the kids. And she just enables and enables and enables because she is personally fucked up by her abandonment issues from him as a kid. And uh, 
Like, the fact that she isn't willing to deal with her issues and is just pushing them off while the kids are like, no, we, mom, please, like, we should go back. You should go back. Like, we, this is how we all get better as yeah. people and healthier and become a better family. She's just pushing it away so she doesn't have to take responsibility or confront, like, her own issues. It's, that's real shit, man. That is real shit. And that's yeah. why this is the best, the best Beth has ever been. I really liked yeah. it. Um, yeah, that was great. And the fucking speech that the counselor mm -hmm. gives at the end, like, yeah. I mean, this is all some, it's some very real shit, you know, like, yep. she hits him with, th there are wrong and right ways this scene could be done, but it just feels very matter of fact to me that like she says, mm -hmm. she's it's not like making fun of him or anything. It's not like she's this huge comeback. She just like lays out exactly. Like, Here's what your issues are. Like, you know, mm -hmm. anybody in my field would know this. Like, this is not like me being magic rocket scientist. It's just like, this is what psychology is. You avoid it because it's not interesting to you for the same reason that like normal shit's not interesting to me. But like, it hit me in a very personal way because yeah, this is one of the most relatable problems I've heard on this show. Uh, let me describe what I've done today. Sure. I, uh, I've, right before we did this podcast, I was doing another one that I had to mm -hmm. do for Patreon. And right after this podcast, I will be doing another one that I do with Monkey Jones every <laughs> week. Um, and right before I did that other podcast, I had recorded a vlog and was working on a different one. Like, I, I've worked on, like, five projects today. What mm -hmm. I haven't done is clean my office, which has, uh, not that dirty, but there's a little bit of stuff around. Haven't really eaten I should have made myself a sandwich, but it was going to take too long, so I ate two frozen waffles instead, and now I'm still hungry. I mm. should have uh, fucking paid this goddamn $350 I owe to the state of New York for a speeding ticket that I got in May, and uh, I need to pay in within the next four days. The reason I haven't <laughs> done that is because it would require me to go to the post office, which is right up the road, but that would be not working. It would right. be boring. It would be normal work upkeep shit. It would just be daily life shit. And daily life shit never takes precedence in my mind over doing something interesting. The only times I go do this shit is when I don't have anything scheduled or planned. I don't have any ideas for videos. You know, like, mm -hmm. it's the days when I'm not feeling creative that I go and I finally get the other shit done. I go and clean up the house. I go, oh, I, I don't have an idea for a video, so I guess I'll, like you know brush my teeth well, that's never gonna happen but I, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll go pick up a th the trash you know like that's yeah, the day yeah. that that shit gets done because you know i it just doesn't feel like an adventure and i want everything to feel like an adventure i want everything to be larger than life never to just be like normie shit you know even though you need the normie shit because your mind cannot handle not being kept up that's why you need to keep a clean space because you feel better and you do better work you know if you dedicate mm -hmm. that hour every day to fucking developing an environment that you can live in you know and don't have the looming stress of oh god will this fucking thing get to the courts in time for me to not owe the government whatever like interest on this shit you know mm -hmm. because i've just been holding on to these envelopes they've been sitting on my desk like in my line of sight for two weeks now you know, <laughs> I know so. the feeling well. I uh, I'd been putting off getting car insurance for a while, uh, and I, I finally got it. But it took me months to just get around to doing it, even though like every day I didn't have it, I was at risk. You know, yeah. it's just like you. Just uh, it's it's so true. That's such a relatable thing. Every fucking person in the world does this shit. And especially now that, like, I don't know, we're all consumed by, like, fantasy of, of like, uh, Hollywood shit and exactly. anime and all this magical shit that we wish would happen in our lives. We just want to, like, every movie is the most interesting portion of those characters' lives. And yeah. we all want that to be happening to us all the time. Uh, and, you know, pe people back in the old days, like, huh, they didn't know what they were missing. So day-to-day uh, -day life, you know, maybe it wasn't and so I, bad to them. I think there's lots of people. It's like she says, some people can handle work and some people can't. Right. And I think most people, like, what we define as normies, what we insult by calling <laughs> normies are people uh -huh. who can work. People who, like can do something every day because they know it's the right thing to do they know it's how you live they know that's like what's normal and then there's people like me who are just like i could never work 
Like, I, I've gotten to the point right now, I don't know if I could work a normal job. Like, I don't know if that would be possible for me because I've gotten so used to this manic lifestyle of, like, constantly making new things. And what what's the phrases that Rick says? It's like he creates... Oh, uh, wubba-lubba-dub-dub. <laughs> 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 he, he says like i'm a scientist i create destroy right. and 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 mutate or something like something, that yeah and yeah. i'm like yeah like that's what's on my mind like if it's not creating or making something new then what's the point of it you know mm-hmm. but the point is obviously you don't become a fucking psychopath who goes around right. <laughs> putting your life at risk every day and murdering people constantly. Yeah, he's a little bit out of whack. You know, I remember when you uh, like when you um, were first starting your Patreon, you know, years ago and shit. And I remember, you know, when you left your job and stuff. And you, even back then, you, you were, you know, saying the sentiment that, like, you know, you just, you just don't feel like uh, that's right for you. And, you know, it, yeah. it's, that, to me, has been, like, a big strength for you personally. And that way you are like a Rick. And that yeah. you are just wired for this lifestyle. That just really seems to me, you know, when I was a kid, I used to think that, like, everyone could do anything. And if you're not, uh, you know, like, excelling at just the shit that everyone needs to do, then you're just not trying hard enough or something. But as I've gotten older, uh, I've really started to realize that there really are different kinds of people who are built yeah. to do different sort of things. Especially as I've discovered what I'm actually good at. And, uh you know, and I, yeah, I don't know, man. She, she's right about that. And, you know, one other point that I really liked about just the, the therapist in general, I really liked how it would be so easy for a show like this to just, like, it, you would think that, like, a nihilist-framed show or, like, a, a show with themes of nihilism about it would, would like, it would be so easy for it to shit on the idea of psychology in general, exactly like like uh, Rick does, and just yeah. be like, this is total fucking bullshit, man. I decide my own destiny. You know, there's nothing controlling me. I'm in control of my own thoughts and mind and all that shit. But the show really does take a more mature stance at it. And even though, like, you know, jokes are thrown in, of course, it's a comedy fucking show with, like, the poop right. stuff and whatever. Like, despite all that... She is absolutely, like, a professional at her craft and has yeah. real things to offer these characters. And it's obvious, and the characters understand it and accept it in the form of Morty and, uh, and Summer. Uh, whereas our, our less mature, people who are just pushing away their problems, the parents, those are the problem people who don't understand the real benefits that could be here. I just yeah. appreciate that. that. That feels refreshing to me, that they're not just, like, shitting on it. Because I, I, I feel like I've seen that a thousand times. I think my favorite part of it is the way – the favorite my favorite part of her speech and how it's framed is that, like, mm-hmm. she – keep saying like you know to rick like you have this amazing level of intelligence like she recognizes Mm -hmm. like rick you are smarter than me but this is what i do is like understand how people think i know how you think like it's the fact that you're smarter than me doesn't preclude me from like this specialization that i have which is to understand how your mind works whether i actually Mm -hmm. like understand the concepts that you do or not um, which is something I find really interesting about psychology in general is that like it's in some yeah. ways an equalizer like we're all humans at the end of the day like how the human mind works is not something that you have a better grasp on just by having a higher IQ like your right, IQ doesn't right. affect your emotions it doesn't affect the chemistry of your brain it's just like how much shit you know and can know. And that's clearly, you know, what Rick's strengths are in as opposed to self-awareness and, that, and yeah. other kind of shit. Yeah, man. It's good stuff. And it's funny. Like, I just watched all of The Sopranos not too long ago, which has – I didn't even notice at the time but like, before I started watching it. But like the fact that Tony Soprano goes to a therapist, a, a psychiatrist, yeah, uh, like is a big undercurrent throughout the whole thing. And it, there's a lot of like dream analysis and uh, – you know, he spends a lot of time talking to her and understanding his motivations for why he, like, lives this gangster lifestyle and stuff. And mm-hmm. it was really interesting there, and it's really interesting here. It's good stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, the only other thing I wanted to talk about was kind of just, like, the progression, spe- the specific progression of, like, Rick in his journey uh, throughout, uh, you know, like, acquiring... Uh, the materials he needed to to do the shitty he uh, that culminated in the gigantic action battle scene at the end, which was yeah. fucking dope. Uh, so just like the way that Rick, I feel like we've already blown our load here, but but nonetheless, <laughs> uh, 
like the way that Rick starts out as an immobile pickle, and then like you were said, like the the cat kicks him off the table or whatever. Uh, rain comes down, he gets flushed down the drain into the sewer. Uh, he then like lures over a cockroach with like spewing brine, so he's like using pickle special abilities in yeah. order to do that, which was dope. The only special ability a pickle has, which I'm glad they didn't try to like stretch that, you know. Like, yeah, me too. There's one thing he could do, and they used it, and then oh, how about you know. uh, how about when he gets hurt later on, and in order to bandage his wound, he uses like mustard and hot sauce and then staples a pickle to <laughs> yeah. his wound to hold in like his pickle guts that was yeah. fucking genius like just from a burger that was sitting there yeah. holy shit that was amazing <laughs> they just commit so close hard close my pickle hole with more pickle it was fucking great well while like of course you know while he's fighting this guy uh uh jaguar jaguar whatever yeah. uh who fucking just like burns and shut or whatever god it was fucking great uh <laughs> I don't know. Like I didn't. There was there was nothing particularly amazing about. Um, like, uh, oh, okay. Well, once once Rick like controls uh, uh, these cockroaches. So he lures him over with Brian. He bites his head, snaps his neck, and then starts puffing his brain with his tongue. He then like then we kind of accelerate to uh, okay. Now he's just gotten to the point where he's building like some machines out of like the various limbs of cockroaches. That now that he can move himself, that he can get uh, get a hold on, and he eventually makes uh, like this battle armor that he can use to fucking chop up these rats in this like amazing gory yeah fucking fight it was so dope i, I god it was the, the best the fucking shit he says to the the big rat at yeah was yeah <laughs> classic like i didn't even give you a name i could have called you scar i call you nothing because you're nothing to me you <laughs> yeah. aren't even worthy to be my adversary but like even the fact that he's addressing the rats like that rat yeah. instantly has character to us as the viewers yeah man it was, it was so good it was yeah. so good this was Where the uh, fuck was he by the way like what what oh, was yeah. this cartel place he was in? <laughs> like, I assume, because they say, the like, there's lines like, like, this country is a prison and stuff like that. That's so right, that's right. I'm assuming he's in Mexico in some kind yeah. of drug cartel place. Where is their house? Like, do they live in California? Like, why are they so close hmm. to the border? Because Rick says he's five minutes away by helicopter from his daughter. So I guess, yeah, I guess they must be uh, are they, like, just based right on, on the... the border of Mexico or something. Based on the the clear like Latin influences on the characters and shit, like yeah, I guess they must he be close Rick to the Sanchez, Mexican border. So yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Um, well shit, man, all the evidence is piling up. I guess they're close to the Mexican border. Yeah. Or or something like that. I don't know. Maybe there's a Mexican installation in the U.S. somewhere. I I don't fucking know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Well, that's that was cool. Uh, the the fight I really liked. Uh, after I I, I just want to mention like how amazing that mouse muscle exoskeleton was. Yeah. Uh, God, it was so fucking sick. And I loved that like it's not like he constructed like human anatomy out of yeah. rat parts. Like he clearly still had like rat legs and rat limbs, and uh, they didn't. They I didn't love how you could see much. the the tendon moving independently of the arm of you the know? bone. Like, yeah, yeah, I noticed it, like, that straightening out that looked really cool that was fucking dope um and then uh the subplot with uh, jaguar was kind of funny it's all right didn't have a big payoff yeah. wasn't that great the uh, fight uh, scene was the coolest i part think there. um i'm hoping they because they brought back jaguar for the after credits scene that was right. funny right i'd feel like maybe they were doing that so that that wouldn't have to happen later because like jaguar is a surviving yes. character so he could come back but i don't think he's that funny or memorable that he should come back you know i think that ending gag was all the payoff that character will ever need yeah. he could show up in like the background or like a crowd or you know whatever but he'll probably uh, yeah. get murdered somewhere in the background of another episode <laughs> Probably, probably. He, I mean, he's really tough. He, he fought toe to toe against Rick and came out, uh, came out alive. He so fought toe to toe against good. Rick as a pickle with rat. Oh limbs. yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he was rocking it. Oh man, dude, how sick was his fucking like laser gun with yeah. using like individual batteries for the fucking charges? God damn, that was awesome. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, that's it, man. I mean, we we kind of yeah. went uh, in a circular, circuitous route there, but that pretty much covers the whole episode and how fucking yeah. great it was. Big I give Rick. this like a, a big wreck. I'm going to give this like a strong nine. I feel like uh, maybe a mid to strong nine. It's very solid. The only complaint I would have is that like the subplot that's in the uh, psychology office is just very mm -hmm. like, you know, it's just like one location with flat shots, you know, like it's not that interesting right. to look at. Um, you know, you know I hear what you're saying. I just like that as is a juxtaposition. I felt like yeah. this was intentional to like the crazy environments that Pickle Rick yeah. is going to. They made it deliberately drab to juxtapose like the insane life Rick has, right. especially as Pickle Rick versus them. So, you know, I, I thought it worked. But, you know, I, I understand your criticism nonetheless. 
Yeah, that's it. Uh, Wubba-lubba-dub-dub. See you later. Uh, Go fuck yourselves. Uh, Bye-bye.